Hey everyone, this is James from Blizzard Lighting, and this is the Lucid DMX tutorial video series. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a dynamic cube, which um, dynamic would be more like more than one scene or sequence um, inside one cube. So, so let's just kind of get into it, huh? Uh, we can start by selecting our torrents, and we will turn on the dimmers and stuff like that. So we can see some output from the fixtures. Um, I'm using the 3D visualizer. Uh, the uh, default big stage loads up by default. I just kind of put some fixtures in there. Not, nothing too fancy. Um, as far as we can leave. But let's keep everything selected. We're gonna be in all or effects or any key list that you want. And let's just go ahead and hit the effects button. So what that is going to do, just move these windows over a little bit. Um, I can go to the color mixing, turn this on, and select rainbow. And my my pucks are going to light up and start doing the five color rainbow as it shows here. I mean I can easily go in and edit this to reflect any kind of color rainbow that I want. Uh, I can even just kind of click OK and take out two colors and it's just going to go RGB rainbow. You know, if I wanted just a red to blue fade like that, you know, just put a black in there. Just, you can have a lot of fun with some of these uh, effects generators, and um, you know, this is just one of many that are in this, in this one. So I'm just gonna let this one do that. Then I'm gonna go to pan and tilt effects. It's already on. You know, green is on, red means off. So I'll turn it on. We'll select circle and we'll make it uh, 12 points. Click OK. We get this you know, nice smooth looking circle on the screen over here. And if we hit play, we uh, can see our moving heads in 3D. And if you, know, if you actually have moving heads and hooked up in front of you with the software, you know, they're all doing the same thing at the same time. So if we kind of want to offset each one a little bit, that's what the phasing is for. So we can kind of take the phasing here and mess it up a little bit. I mean, they're not all doing the same exact thing at the same time. You can see that, you know, the difference between uh, certain phasing numbers. You know, this is like 24. Well, again, this was zero, all doing the same thing. And uh, 19, 20, or whatever, they're all kind of offsetting each other. So, you uh, can even do half and half with uh, 50 phasing. See that you know one and two, then three and four, doing stuff. Um, you know, from fifty onwards, it kind of starts going the opposite direction as it was going from you know zero up to fifty. So you know zero to about forty-nine ish or whatever is kind of like from. You see, it's going from. You know, it's going kind of clockwise and uh, doing it this way kind of reverses it a little bit. It doesn't really show it on here, but it's you can see the light kind of like switching direction. So this stuff you gotta play with to kind of see what satisfies your eyes and did your client's eyes. So that's doing that. Now I can like, go to advanced effects and select color. It's going to apply to the color wheel on our torrents. And create a sinus wave, and you know, you know can even uh, notch it in between two different levels. That way, they're all kind of doing something. And you can see the phasing is even taking place on the, the color wheel. So if I want to turn this off, then they'll all be doing the same thing. Or if I can mess it up a little bit, they'll each be offsetting each other a little bit. 
So just really cool ways to kind of do stuff. You can pick a different wave, a square, and it'll just simply hop from one to the next. So, so then I now I just created a red and white chase on the torrent moving heads, which is cool. You know, I can adjust the phasing of it, just the speed of it, and you know, the torrent F5s they can really they can handle some speed on the color wheel. They really can. So. Just feel free to go ahead and mess around with these. C create iris pulse if you wanted to. So just a whole bunch of stuff that you can do. Um, if you want to leave something where it's at, then I'll you know, just mess around with that a little bit. Of that. So now that we have some effects made, this is how we're going to create our dynamic cube. Um, this is just one way. So we can you know, just click generate and ask add a sequence, which means that you want to add another sequence or cube to this cube list. Um, most cases, yes. Um, some cases, if you already set up a blank one, then you start to create an effects. You can uh, just have it add to the current sequence and then delete the top one because that is obviously going to be empty. So let's just add a sequence for this example. And we can click this off. So here is sequence 2, which has all of our stuff in it. Pre generated for us all 32 steps. You can even you know, test and play it back and see how it shows up for us live on the fly. You know. So we can even go in and you know, select, and you know, I'll say, oh, don't look at crap, I forgot to put a global on it. So I can just select all these, you know, select the torrents, all these stuffs are selected. Oh, global 2. Hey, play. Uh, Combo 2 is just to run into all 32 of those cues at once. Um, if you only want them to do like every other, so you can literally just hold down control, select, you know, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 12, uh, any, any combination that you might want. You don't even have to do all of them, you can just do some. And now I can do so like go five. So now these are gonna switch. And the goals are switching until so you know that's that's a lot of extra time for this video as so well. Just being able to edit stuff after you've created it. Without having to reopen up the editor and scrap the whole thing and start over from scratch. There's no need. So that's one way to create a dynamic uh, scene or cube. Let's go ahead and create a new one. And I'm just gonna keep it simple for this video. I'm just gonna go say I wanted to do like a color fade. Um, this is a, a new sequence. This is empty. We'll start out on blue. Then we'll add a new sequence. Change color. Add a new sequence. Change color again. Add a new sequence. Let's you know, do blue like that. Like a nice color combo. Change this up to like yellow. Change this up to green like that. And one more. We'll just kind of make them back go all to like white. And I can turn on the white in here too. So I can even do just white if I wanted to. So, so 
that and we just made that ourselves. So now it's gonna it's gonna hold for one second. There's no fade time selected. So if you wanted to fade, you know, if you don't want to find a nice smooth color fade, and then just to jump on the last one, you can just hold down control and select all these. Do a one second fade or two second fade with. Uh, one point, uh, one and a half second ish. A hold. So it's gonna fade into that nice and smooth. And then once we get to the last one, it's going to pop. It's white. And then that's gonna fade into. The, so you can, you can create your own cue this. Sequence list, whatever you want, uh, any cue that you want. So that's that's uh, using the effects generator to create that dynamic, and that's also doing it manually yourself. Um, you know, the same method applies if you want to combine different different lights um, manually. Just you know, go in and select them, and then leave it at that step. Once so you have everything for that step created, go on to the next one, then uh, start the process over again. So that's how you create a dynamic cube in Lucid. So I hope you have to learn something from this video. Um, again, if we if we left anything out, or if you have any questions or comments, or you know, if you want to say Jingles, you're awesome, you know, please do so in the comments below, or send us an email to support at blizzardlighting.com. So thanks again for watching, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.